Okay, everybody, I thought I would do a follow up to this tutorial about when you get damaged and then you freeze. But uh, somebody asked me, well, how'd you do the ice cube thing effect that when you do freeze, you kind of turn to a block of ice. So uh, we're just going to kind of come out here and get hit by one of these guards. And you can see here that we get this ice cube that kind of comes around with the particle effect. And you probably can't hear it, but there's also sort of a freezing sort of effect that happens again in sound. So it ties it all together. Anyways, let's look at that. OK, we are inside of UEFN and the layout is simple for this. I've got the guard spawner here. So give me something to get damaged by. We've got our little trigger here that we bring an acorn in. It gives us a weapon. Nothing big going on there. And then way over underneath the ground, I've put an ice block. Now I put the ice block out of view for now because we don't need it until we get damaged. And you can see that it is a 3D object and we've got a VFX around it with an audio device as well. It's a little bit special. So our audio player is this guy here and it just makes a crackling sort of uh, ice sound. We've got a VFX spawner that I have made to just give that little bit of ice icicles or ice snow kind of effect. And then the item that actually goes around the player is just a 3D object that I made in Blender. And if you don't know how to use Blender, I encourage you to use it. It is very powerful and can be used for all kinds of extra 3D models. This is a very simple, I think I just used a sphere and then I messed around with it in, I think the sculpting mode. Then I just sculpted out my ice cube or whatever it is. And then into shading and then I applied a glass BSDF to it to make it appear like glass. Uh, but I think I don't think this transferred well, so I ended up making my own material instead of UEFN. Anyways, but the original object is just here inside of Blender. I just made a ice block so that we freeze up. OK, so back inside of UEFN, we can see inside of models, I've got my ice block, which is a static mesh. A very, very simple item there. And then we've got our material, which is uh, it's got some opacity to it. It is a light blue. We've got uh, a little bit of uh, shininess to it uh, that, that kind of applies. This might have actually come in with Blender, but it was a while ago when I did this. So I'm not sure. But anyways, take a screenshot of that if you want to know how I made my material. OK, and then the VFX spawner is quite literally just the VFX spawner with a Niagara effect in it. And my VFX is here. You can see I've got this icy one. And this is the setup of this. It's just a very basic particle that sort of floats in the air and is blue. You know, you should learn about Niagara effects if you can get the opportunity. And uh, that's that's pretty much it for the ice block uh, here in the scene. So we just put that thing back down below because we don't want to see it in the scene right away. So we just hide it. All right, this is all the verse stuff. Um, this is what's going to make it all happen. We've got our ice block here as an editable. We've got our VFX spawner device as an editable and our ice sound as an editable so that we can connect them up inverse from the scene. We want to make sure that we capture the spawned event so that when our player spawns, we can apply a function that listens for when they're damaged. Now, we've already covered all of this, so uh, I'm going to link that tutorial below. But just to give you an idea again, just a refresh here, when we do get damaged right here, we do the stasis thing. So we don't allow emotes, we don't allow falling, we don't allow turning. And then we put them in stasis. So that's how you'd freeze them. We already know that part. But the part that I didn't cover, because it's kind of extra, I did this spawn and then move the ice block. And we're going to move it to the character that got damaged. So when we do that, we've got this move ice block function here, and it's going to take in the character that was damaged. And we're going to go ice block move to. Now we did spawn because we want to use a move to. You could also use a teleport to, um, but a move to requires suspend. So keep that in mind. And we're moving it in 0.1 of a second. And where are we moving it to? We're moving it to where the character is with the Z being 80 pixels in the positive direction different because that's where the ice block sort of lives. I wanted it to sort of land on the ground. So the character Z translation is in such a space that we need to um, minus off 80 uh, from the character Z to have the ice block sit just right. So this will differ depending on the size of your ice block. And then we want to make the ice sound play. Now, I've already got the VFX running all the time. Uh, it's a very basic 
looping VFX. So you could have it disabled in the beginning and then enable it here, but I've just left it. So, and then we have that sound play. It goes, just makes a sound. And that's how you would have an ice block go to the player that gets frozen. Now, this also will only work with one player. I'll cover more multiplayer stuff pretty soon. But if you know how to do multiplayer stuff, then this is what you'll do. You'll move an ice block or teleport. Or if you're a real keener, you could use a spawn prop. But this is the easiest way to do it. Put it on your stage, make it an editable, and then just move it when the player gets damaged. Keeping in mind that my game manager lives here and I've got all my editables in here that are all set up. So my ice block is sitting right in here. So that's a quick one. Hopefully that helps. I will be back with more tutorials very soon. And so I'll see you guys in the next one.